Hey guys, well I am long overdue for a get ready with me and I'm trying something a little bit new today. So we're just gonna roll with it. Uh, yes, I'm still in my pajamas <laughs> because it's cold out and sometimes I put them back on when I don't know what I'm gonna wear. I feel like I am more red than normal because um, I put on the Colleen Rothschild Sheer Renewal Cream as my moisturizer. Um, but I have, this is like, a few times this has happened, so now I'm pretty much, I know I can't do this. I use the Good Jeans uh, as my serum in the morning. Well, something about when I use the Good Jeans, I use the Colleen Rothschild over it. Um, it irritates my skin a little bit. So there's something with those two, they don't like each other. So um, anyway, bear with me a little bit. Um, it's like my cheeks and my nose, I can tell it's really red. So sorry about that. So I'm gonna use the Giorgio Armani luminous silk um it's been a long time since i've done one of these and you guys have asked for them recently and i feel so bad because it's always like oh can you do a look um you know in a video can you do a tutorial on this look half the time like i always say i forget what i'm doing um you know or what i did in that video so it's really hard for me to recreate so today we're just winging it kind of just doing my makeup how i would normally would and we'll see where we end up um, I am using a new camera. I probably need to adjust the lighting on it. We're just gonna go with it for now and we'll see where it ends up. So speaking of when I said it was cold, I think my husband said this morning when he left for work it was like 19 degrees. Y'all know that's cold anywhere, let alone down here. It's like I'm ready to move <laughs> somewhere warmer. Our normal is about 50 for the high, which is not bad. I can deal with that. So we're just having a cold snap. Yesterday it snowed a little bit. It didn't stick, you know, too much, but had snow flurries off and on all day. I did get my hair highlighted yesterday, so if it looks particularly light, I haven't washed it yet since then. I find, is anybody else fine with this foundation? I feel like I have to almost use a little bit more. It's so thin. Typically, I would be like two pumps of a foundation, and I don't know if it's because I use it with a beauty blender and it being thin that it kind of absorbs quicker. Um, but anyway, I just find that it seems like two pumps doesn't quite get me where I need. I usually need about two and a half. And what I've been doing just to kind of use it up, I didn't do it today, I've been using that um, It Cosmetics, the, what do they call this thing? CC Plus Veil Beauty Fluid Foundation. I talked about this in a recent update. I've been putting this on a few redness places under foundation because it's so thin, but yeah, it gives really nice coverage, kind of cancels out the redness. Um, so that's something nice just to use it up. Um, and I do like it for that. It's really not enough coverage for me otherwise, I feel like. So I'm just putting like a tiny bit on the beauty blender just to kind of like I said, I feel like my face is more red than normal. And I don't know why. I feel like every time I do a get ready with me, my face seems extra red that day. So I don't even know why I address it <laughs> anymore. And I have um, hyperpigmentation here. I had a breakout that was pretty bad. And of course, I have one like here that's going away. Um, but I swear I think that Luna Oil and the Good Jeans really helped to fade those spots quicker than normal, which is awesome. I do have uh, that Dior. I always put that on like right after I do my skincare. So I will get used to it, I promise, but I'm sorry if I keep looking over the side, I wanna make sure I'm in frame because this is sitting out a little bit more than what I'm used to. So I'm just using my Pixi corrector because um, I've had the sniffles with the weather change the last few days, so my eyes pretty, purpley and red looking. Especially in this one, just because my eye shape is a little different, so it kinda is more concave on that corner. So on this corner, I feel like I always need more correcting. I even put eye drops in right before I started filming because my eyes looked so red, probably because they're dry with the heat being on. I feel like I wanna sneeze, so my nose probably keeps getting redder as I'm talking. So on days like that when um, I'm more red, I will just usually put powder foundation 
over. So, I don't know. I bought this again. The Makeup Forever. Um, this is like the kind of corrector concealer palette. This is in the number one. I don't remember it being this thin. It's like a pretty thin consistency. So, I usually use um, this middle one because it has like a... I don't, I don't know if you can tell, yeah. It has like a slight green tint to it for blemishes. Um, this one or this one, and sometimes mixed, is really good if I want to use it under my eyes. This is just an old crown brush. It's really small, but since my nose is pretty red today. But anyway, I was saying about this being thin, I don't feel like it's maybe the best for blemishes because I feel like um, and these are just red marks left over. I feel like it doesn't adhere as well as some other thicker. I like a thicker consistency um, for actually hiding blemishes, you know, because it sticks to it and you don't have to worry about it moving. And they don't have to powder as much. But I had for years, you guys know, and I finally threw it out because of the cream product and I probably held on to it way longer than I should have. That Cinema Secrets palette that I absolutely love. That was one of those things that just went everywhere with me because it had so many shades that if I was breaking out or anything. Um, well, now um, Sephora carries it and I ordered a couple, but they're not the same shades. Um, they're much darker looking. So, I was hoping I could get the same thing. I may still end up breaking down just ordering it from the Cinema Secrets site because I loved that thing. Anyway, I just don't like uh, the color choices. And maybe they don't have all the colors. Maybe that's the thing. Um, Sephora doesn't carry all the colors. It just seems different. The packaging is different too, but then again, I've had mine for years. Like now it's like a black packaging and mine was clear. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time Concealing, I think I'll just probably use some of that Becca um, powder because that usually helps. So i am still been kind of digging <laughs> in the remnants of this one. I haven't opened the new one yet. And I use a few different brushes with it I've talked about, but this is the Face Buffer brush by uh, Makeup Geek. I really like the Makeup Geek brushes and use them for different foundation applications. This is good if I just need, you know, more toning or more coverage kind of on my nose. <laughs> Sorry for the sniffles. I hope I don't do that throughout the whole video. Sometimes I don't notice it until editing and it's like, oh my god. <laughs> so I'm using probably a little bit more than normal. And a lot of times I'll just stamp it on for kind of more coverage. I don't want to swirl too much because I don't want to disrupt the foundation. Although I'm probably putting way more on my chin than I should. Because that's the only thing I don't like about this particular foundation. I feel like it looks good everywhere else, but it can kind of draw attention to my chin and mouth area, which I've always said, you know, I don't like that area. I'm going to have to end up breaking down and get some laser because I feel like Juvederm is probably gone about as far as it can go with me. I need something to actual take care of the texture, you know, all over. Which actually, I think I'm gonna do a review soon, or not a review, kind of a comparison of my um, initial Juvederm pictures for acne scarring, and then compare them to where I'm at now. Because I know a lot of people are interested in that um, for acne scarring. So if you're like me, it does work and I have you know, not complained at all. I've loved every time I've even went. This is the uh, benefit, what do I call this? Stay Don't Stray. This is my favorite eye primer. I feel like I'm so out of practice doing a get ready with me. I don't know why. And I'm one of those people, I have a hard time talking and putting on makeup. Like I'll just totally stop what I'm doing and just start talking, so. Try not to make these too long. Okay, let's use some bronzer. I don't know what I want to use. I've, I've been using the one lately, the Hourglass one, out of this palette. I really like this one. It's funny because I am going to film a video after this, so I'll probably get more 
glammed up than normal, but at the same time, I'm just doing work today at home and then I need to run to Target. So it's like, I don't want to totally overdo it. I'm not sure what I think about this being true to color or not. I still feel like it might be, I don't know. It could just be the lighting is a little off. So we shall see. Blush. Um, I don't know what I want to use. I've, I've been kind of indecisive about blush lately. I don't know. Nothing's wowing me. I've been using the mood exposure a lot in this palette. Um, I don't know. I feel like I want to use something else today, but not sure what. Let's see. Okay, this is right on top. I use the e.l.f. Mellow Mob. This is like just such a great go-to blush. It's definitely my favorite for this time of year, but it's just a beautiful uh, blush in general. I just like the this color this time of year. It just gives that really pretty flushed look to the cheek. Not that I need a lot of blush today because my face is already red, but we're going with it. And then I just take, um, this is a Sephora. Pro Airbrush 55. This always has some trace hourglass uh, ambient powder on it. I just kind of trace over the edges to blend it a little and especially if like I've gotten um, too close. On this side it tends to look closer than this side just because my cheekbone isn't as high on this side. Um, even though they're really the placement is the same but I think sometimes visually it can look closer over here if that makes sense. Yes, I realize I inspect my face way closer than any one person should. Okay, next is eyebrows. I probably should just do an eyebrow tutorial. I'm using the Anastasia in taupe. I just ordered their, is it Brow Define? That's a little bit thicker than this one because some days I'm telling you this is so tedious because you see all the filling in I have to do. It's like, oh, eyebrows are growing back and then sometimes they'll look like they're growing back over here and then other times they're so thin. Um, and then if you look, you know, you can see about how much I need from here over is like bare. <laughs> so anyway, I have a lot of filling in to do. Um, Anyway, some days I just don't feel like, you know, messing with it. Like I want something really quick and I want something like wider than this tiny little thing. But I have a hard time with finding a color match always. So, I mean, just look how that little bit, you know, it's like, oh, eyebrow already. It's great. And it's funny, sometimes then I'll look back in videos and I'm like, oh my God, my eyebrows were so uneven that day. But they're so uneven to begin with, it's really hard to make them look uh, even similar. You know, I've always joked that mine, mine aren't even cousins, let alone sisters. <laughs> like they're distant relatives of uh, each other. Okay, so I'm gonna use the Tartlet in Bloom since um, that's when I've gotten some requests lately to do what I'm wearing. And I have gotten a really bad habit of using this really wide brush because I'm lazy for quite some time. Now this again is an old crown brush. Um, I usually just use this lightest color a little bit um, for right under the brow bone. And when I'm doing this not trying to be real neat, this takes me like two seconds. I feel like it's like the easiest eye. And then of course one of my favorite shades is this pearly champagne kind of pink color. I just flip the brush over. For me, like my eye shape, my age, everything, I just find when I have a brighter inner corner, it just looks prettier. And then I'll probably end up taking kind of this like taupe shade here and put it on um, the other part of my lid. And some of these shadows, I definitely feel like you need to tap them off. Again, not precise, you know me, I'm not precise about anything with my eyes. I feel like the more precise I try to be, the worse it looks. Like that shade in particular kicks up a lot, I feel like. Then I'm just going to take a MAC uh, 217. A lot of time I'll mix these two shades right here. They're definitely a little bit warm. Like this one's a little more warm. So I'll mix the two and use it like as a crease color just to bring something, especially on this eye, because this is my eye that is more hooded. Um, so I feel like I need something high on the crease on that eye. And this is really just all I've been doing. I mean, it's kind of just, 
it ends up pulling together in the end, but it's really not anything special. And then that's it. If you wanted, you could use, you know, one of these other colors or the darker color, darken up. Like if it was at night or something, I'd probably dark up, darken up the outer edge a little bit. But when I just want something quick and I want to use this palette, that's what I've been doing. Sometimes I do my eyeliner before my concealer. Sometimes I'll clean up my concealer. Um, this is still the Maybelline uh, Fit Me. Love it. I, you know, we know that it's supposed to be similar to the NARS and then it almost even looks like it could be a dupe for the Urban Decay Naked too. I may try that one just to know, but I mean, this one is just so good that I haven't felt the need to try another one. Sometimes I use a brush, sometimes I just use my finger if I'm trying to be quick. Another reason why I feel like sometimes the is boring because a lot of times I just use the same products, but I just feel like as I've gotten older, you just realize what works and what doesn't. Um, again, the Chanel Marine Liner. I've talked about this forever. It's a navy liner, but it definitely has, you can see, it's almost like a black navy, which I like. So it's not too blue, but I feel like it has that hint of blue that brightens up um, the eyes a little and I just tight line probably about halfway in with this So outer corner to halfway in sometimes I'll do on the upper line just on the outside um, But I've said before you know I use this because not only I think it helps my particular eye shape, but it also tones down the redness because I'm one of those people if I wear the nude color on my inner rim, which I've tried, it just looks weird on me. It doesn't look good. I see it on other people. I'm like, oh, that looks so good. Let me try that again. On me, it looks strange. I, you know, I don't know why. And then I'll just kind of connect it on the outer where I need to. Whew, my eyes are watering today. And again, sometimes I'll line the upper, um, you know, lash line. I think that's one of the biggest changes I've made over the last year or more is not um, always lining my upper lash line, which I always used to. It was just like automatically grab for the liquid or gel liner. But I don't know. I just find it's more flattering maybe. You see my lashes more. It looks maybe a little younger not having so much liner all the way around. At night, obviously, if I'm going out doing something, I will still... Um, line, you know, my upper lash line. This is the Jordana Khaki Liner. I like this. I was in a big shadow kick for a long time. Sometimes shadow can look messy on me underneath and look, I don't know, like, just it looks messy. This gives me that little bit of color I'm looking for, um, but without, I don't know, looking too much like a smoky eye, if that makes sense. Just like a little bit. Because sometimes I feel like the lash line looks naked after I've lined the inner rim. Sometimes it comes down just enough where it blends. And other times I'm, I'm like, no, I need something on the lash line still. I have kind of been using this lately. This little primer I got in a 500 point perk with some other Lancome things. This is pretty nice. Um, maybe I'll use it today. It's white. I don't love lash primers, but I actually like this one. And I don't know, maybe I'm not using very much of it, um, but I feel like it's not like it looks terribly white on. I've been using the Lancome Hypnose Drama, but today I'm gonna go back. I just love this mascara. The Voluminous Butterfly from L'Oreal. I don't know why, I just, it's still one of my favorites. Sometimes I feel like the Hypnose Drama, once I've been using it, can look clumpy. Um, I don't know. It's it kind of comes and goes with me. There's one eye. Mascara, man. That's like just the best product they've ever invented. <laughs> Makeup. Well, maybe besides foundation. I am a foundation junkie, but that's always just because I've had imperfect skin. I like covering it up. And this is the mascara I pretty much always use on my bottom lash, regardless of what I use on the upper lashes. It's just one of those really nice because I think I prefer rubber um, wands for the lower lash. They're not as messy or clumpy. Trusty pointed Q-tip. 
just to clean up anything. Possibly underneath or above. That's the only thing bad about when you don't wear a liner on your upper lash line is you get musky or transfer sometimes. And then I actually have, I bought this, the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder. To me, it is very powdery. If you don't be, you know, if you're not careful, it will kick up a lot of powder and look like you have powder on. I know everybody loves that for under their eyes, but this is still my favorite, as you can see. Hit Major Pan, Hourglass Diffuse Light. You don't need a lot of it. Um, this is my favorite for setting under eyes because it doesn't make my eyes look dried out if you don't use too much. Um, and I like it for all over sometimes too. Some Like today, I don't feel like I needed it. My skin's a little dry, which might not be a good thing here soon. It could be making my foundation look bad. <laughs> um, but anyway, I don't love that powder. I don't know what it is. It's is. I've tried to work with it, but it's just okay. All right, so let's pick some lips. I always just blot that little bit off. I have no idea what I want. To do today. Let me just do, this is that Marc Jacobs liner in, I think it's Primrose, that little bitty one I talked about in that uh, nude lip kit. This is a great liner, but very smooth. I mean, you could just wear that on its own if you want. Um, let's see. I think I'm going to use, I hate using this because I don't think you guys can get it yet, but this is that It Cosmetics um, Blurred Lines, the Je Ne Sais Quoi. You can't get this color by itself yet. I'm sure they'll come out with it eventually. I love this formula so much that I'm really thinking about picking it up in another shade. They have like a really pretty, pretty nude shade, so I think I might do that. This is a pretty combo. I wore this, I think, in my Instagram picture. Uh, yesterday with my highlights. I've not found it to get on my teeth, but one thing I do with blotting because I can't stand that nasty thing of putting your finger in your mouth. Not only does it look freaking disgusting and everybody, that's nothing new. I feel like I learned that in high school. But anyway, if you put your lips around a tissue the right way, it does the same thing. And that way you're not putting your nasty, dirty finger that you've just put all your makeup on in your mouth. Uh, anyway, tissue, and if you put your lips around it like this, like, then you'll get that inner rim. If you just blot it like, you know, like that, then you might not. But so you have to put a, like that, see? That's what I do. Okay, so this is probably gonna be super long. And yes, I have, I will eventually switch out of my pajamas. You'll probably see me, uh, in a video with this makeup on because like I said I'm going to try to film here in a minute. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you had any questions about anything I used and everything I did use I'll link below but sometimes you know these are just good to have chit chatty videos and I wanted to test out my camera here to see what I thought of it. I'll really know in editing what I think of it and again I will um whew, my nose itches. I will play with the lighting a little bit because I can tell it does look a little bit um, probably dark. I feel like the cheeks look a little dark, but everything else is, you know, kind of true to color. We'll see. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and we'll see you next time. Bye.